On a January 10th call, just four days after the insurrection, McCarthy also expressed concerns that Republicans in his own conference might incite violence against their fellow party members. The other thing that we have to do is these members on either whatever position you are calling out other members, that stuff's got to stop, especially in this nature. So I get up right here, I'm, I'm going to call Gate. But anything else we see, don't assume I see everything, don't assume I know everything. Uh, but we've got to have one central point. So, I mean, if you can bring this stuff to Dan, Natalie, or Legansky, so you can have it. But, I mean, don't sit back around. Um, it's going to be for you guys personally. Tension is too high. The country is too crazy. I do not want to look back and think we caused something or we missed something and someone got hurt. Um, I don't want to play politics with any of that. That's a remarkable moment of moral clarity. I don't want to look back and think someone got hurt. I don't want to play politics with any of it. McCarthy singled out Republican Congressman Matt Gates of Florida as someone whose inflammatory rhetoric might get people hurt. McCarthy was worried that Gates, who frequently criticized fellow Republicans by name for being insufficiently loyal to Trump in his eyes, was inflaming tensions at a time when the country was already in a volatile position. It was a concern echoed by others on the call, including the number two Republican in caucus, a man who was shot, we should remember, Congressman Steve Scalise. Okay, the other thing I want to bring up, and I'm making some phone calls to some members. Um, I, just, I just got something sent now about Newsmax, something Matt Gates said, where he's calling people's names out, saying an anti-Trump in this type of uh, atmosphere. Um, in some of the other places, this is, this is serious stuff people are doing that has to stop. Um, I'll make individual calls. Mo, Mo and, uh, and Louis' comments, too, a lot of members have said some real no, concerning no, things no, about... Did they, say so, did they say something today, too? Not that Louis was at, I mean, um, Mo was at the rally, you know, the we're, we're kicking ass and taking names thing at the Trump rally. Uh, well, these are the things right before they, they kicked that ass. Okay, what did Gates say? Hey, Gates, uh, Gates brought up Liz specifically. I just saw that on Twitter. And Adam, someone just sent it to um, Gonzalez just sent it to me, so I'm calling Gates. I'm explaining to him. I don't know how much to say, but I'm going to have some other people call him too. But the nature of what, if I'm getting briefing, I'm going to get another one from the FBI tomorrow. Uh, this is serious shit to cut this out. Yeah, that's, that, that's, that's, uh, I mean, it's potentially illegal what he's doing. Well, he's putting people in jeopardy, and he, he doesn't need to be doing this. It's, we, we saw what people would do in the Capitol, um, you know, and these people came prepared with, with rope, with everything else. If the Republicans win the House, as a lot of pundits seem to think is a fait accompli, the question is not whether or not McCarthy has a chance to ever again be Speaker. The question is, will he even have a job? Obviously concerned about the crowd who attacked the Capitol, the former speaker attacked Gates, Brooks, and other Trump supporters in the phone call you just heard. They didn't like that. But the part of that tape that's most disturbing to Americans is where McCarthy says in the days immediately after the insurrection, the Democrats were in a very strong position. Maybe that was so then, but not now. And the question is, what happened? I mean, it's fair to say, are there any Republicans that weren't a part of the planning and cover-up? McCarthy backed away from his early criticism of Trump in the days following January 6th to a place that can only be described as no man's land. Every Republican who criticized Trump after January 6th, Graham and McConnell and Collins, they also backed down within days, but they weren't caught on tape. Matt Gates, who seems to be on the path to re-election despite charges of trafficking minors for sex, attacked McCarthy, and he was adored by millions who continue to support Trump. Kevin McCarthy is, is just somebody who uh, they th he thought he could cut a deal with these people, um, but they're going to eat him alive. Uh, Gates, uh, Congressman Gates tweeted tonight, uh, this is the behavior of weak men, not leaders. Uh, he said, while I was protecting President Trump from impeachment, they were protecting Liz Cheney from criticism. The question is, will McCarthy be another Liz Cheney? Uh, yes and no. Cheney, who faces an uphill battle to keep her seat, remained true to her opposition to Trump and this slow disintegration of the Republican Party. McCarthy lost his courage, his conviction, and now he could lose his seat. Does the fact that this audio 
was leaked in the first place mean that there are some Republicans out there who have some knives out for you? I, I think it's probably a little more of the Democrat side as well. Final question on this topic. Let's say Republicans win and you're speaker again or you seek to be speaker again. Do you think this tape has any impact on that? No, I don't think it has any impact at all. What really has impact is what we're doing today to make sure Title 42 does not get lifted. That you've got a Biden administration that has opened up this border. The only border that McCarthy needs to worry about now is whether or not he's crossed the Trump line of no return and whether or not the Don has enough gas in his tank for yet another drive-by.